In this video, we're going to go ahead and create a higher poly version of our model and add just a seam going around the top and the bottom. Typically, you would export the model to a program like ZBrush or Mudbox and do this. You'd create the high poly model and bring it back and bake it. But since we're not covering those programs, we're just going to go ahead and do that inside of Maya. Just something simple that we can use when we go through our texturing process. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up our perspective outliner view panel, and I'm going to go ahead and select our object. And I'm going to hit control plus D. That's going to create a duplicate of our object. Then I'm going to select our first object. I'm going to hit control plus H and that's going to hide it so we don't accidentally select it. So now we'll, we know anything that we do will be to our higher poly sculpt. Now we also want to go ahead and get the body hidden. So come over to your channel layer box editor, select that tab. And again, if you can't see that tab, it should be this one on the far right it should show hide channel box, select that and it'll give you this. Now in our layer editor, we're going to click the V key to hide that layer because the body is a member of this layer, it becomes invisible. Now with it hidden, let's go ahead and right click on our object and select face. And we're going to go ahead and select some faces that we're going to where we're going to create our seam. Now we want our seam to go sort of along this edge and along the bottom around here. So to create that seam, we're going to use extrusions. So first thing we'll do is go to face and select one face below it or below where we want our seam. And I'm going to double click to get a ring all the way around it. And then on the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select one face, then double click the one next to it. And now I have the faces inside of where we want our seam to be. Now let's select all these faces in between the two. So I'll just hold down shift and double click the one next to it and just keep doing this. Now that I have them all selected, I'm going to come up here to Edit Mesh. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to go to Extrude. I'm just going to click that once. And we're going to set our local Z translate to a negative 0.1. All right, so negative 0.1. It's going to kind of push it in. And as you can see, it's pushed in. Now remember how with the edge, we added those edge loops around this border at the top? And it helped us get a nice, smoother kind of flow to it. We're going to do that same thing on the inside of where we're creating this seam. So we're going to go ahead and go up to Edit Mesh with all these faces still selected. And we're going to go back to Extrude again. Now this time, we're going to go ahead and with Local Z, we're going to go ahead and type in negative 0.01. So we get a really tiny one. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what just happened. You see the really tiny one now? There's a really tiny polygon face here and here, just a really tiny one. Well, that gave us an edge loop around here, so it'll help tighten up where we've pushed our seam in. So it'll tighten this up. We're not going to add one up at up on this near the top because we want this to kind of go smooth and sharp and back out smooth. And that's how we're going to create our seam. So we're going to go ahead and bring it back out the same way we brought it in. So we're going to just hit G on the keyboard because that will redo extrude. So now we have a new extrusion and we will in the local Z translate type in 0.01 this time instead of negative. That's going to bring it back up the same as we brought it in. And then we're going to hit G on the keyboard once more and we're going to type in 0.1 to bring it back out all the way. Now we should have a flush surface, but if you come from the inside, you can see that we have created and extrusion there are now faces on the inside. Now, what did that do? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. We'll right click, go to object mode, select off the object, select the object and press three on your keyboard. But then on top of that, let's get a real good look at this by turning off the wireframe on shaded, right? And there we have it. We have a nice seam going around the top and the bottom of our model. Very crafty, nifty thing that you can do in Maya. Now we still have to smooth this before we bake it. So we're going to press one on the keyboard. And with the object selected, let's go up to mesh, drop this down and select smooth. And that's going to divide it one time, which is called a subdivision. And now we have it. Now it's solid. It's in there permanently. So this is actually ready to bake. And just because usually this is supposed to be done in ZBrush, then bake from ZBrush. Let's actually subdivide it one more time. We're going to go up to mesh. I'm going to select smooth and that's going to make it a really high poly object. This thing is ridiculously high now. All right. So with it selected, go ahead and come up to edit and delete by type. And we're going to select history. All right. We're also going to select our 
primary object, the one that we have hidden, just go ahead and select it in your outliner, then go up to edit and delete by type and select history. Now, before we bake, I need to make sure that anyone who doesn't have Mental Ray for Maya installed, I need to help you guys get that installed. So in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and install Mental Ray for Maya. 2016. If you already have Mental Ray for Maya 2016 installed, skip that video, the very next one, and go on to the one very after that where we're going to be doing our baking. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post below the video and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.